Madison Grant is a very interesting man. He's charming, he's witty, he's erudite. He's the kind of guy you would like to have dinner with. Madison Grant has been largely forgotten by history, but he was one of the most important conservationists who ever lived. He was also probably the most influential racist who ever lived, and who led directly to the Holocaust. Madison Grant traces his roots all the way back to the original Puritan settlers. His family owned some of the most valuable real estate in the world. He numbers among his uh, ancestors, signers of the Declaration of Independence. Madison Grant was as American as an American could have been. Among his closest friends were Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Warren G. Harding, John D. Rockefeller Jr., J.P. Morgan. Grant and Teddy Roosevelt had much in common. were both leading progressives. They felt it was the uh, duty of the state to step in to regulate uh, all facets of uh, American life. Madison Grant became renowned throughout the world as a great big game hunter. But as he hunted, he began to realize that our big game animals were dwindling in number. And so he dedicated decades of his life to the conservation movement. Perhaps his greatest conservation activity, Grant saved the California redwoods, buying up for millions of dollars the remaining redwood groves from the lumber companies and then turning them over to the state of California to be preserved as state parks. <music> Zoos all around the world were tiny, cramped institutions where all the animals were kept in solitary confinement. And then Grant founds the Bronx Zoo. This is where animals were allowed to roam in groups in natural habitats that resembled their natural environment. This is the largest and most beautiful zoo in the world. He also worked tirelessly to save the bald eagles in the sky, antelopes on the prairie, whales in the ocean. What's fascinating is his preservation activities sort of backfired. Grant created wildlife refuges, and thus their populations kept increasing and increasing and increasing until their population grew beyond the carrying capacity of the range. Grant realized we have to actually manage our wildlife population. And so Grant invented what today we call wildlife management. And that's important because I think that once Grant made the philosophical decision, that it was okay to regulate the wildlife population, it wasn't so hard for him to think it's okay to regulate the human population in our midst. So he propagated the idea of eugenics. The government should step in to regulate the breeding of the inferior people, the Jews, the Mexicans, the poor, the handicapped. And so Grant urged the states to institute sterilization statutes by which tens of thousands of Americans deemed to be unfit were sterilized against their will to prevent them from breeding. Grant also urged the states successfully to pass anti-miscegenation legislation. In 1916, Grant wrote his best-selling book, The Passing of the Great Race. It's one of the most important books of the 20th century. Grant sets forth the theory that the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Nordics were at the top of the ethnological pyramid, with all the other races falling in place beneath the Nordics. It was a very influential book. Adolf Hitler, who in 1924 was doing research for his autobiography, Mein Kampf, was given a copy of Passing of the Great Race. He immediately fired off a fan letter to Madison Grant, in which he said, this book is my Bible. The Nazis come to power in 1933, and you can see how the German policies are directly influenced by the passing of the great race. Straight on to the final solution under which six million Jews were murdered. It is chilling that after World War II, when the Allies put the remaining Nazi leaders on trial for crimes against humanity, Dr. Karl Brandt, he was Adolf Hitler's leading physician in the Third Reich, and he entered passages from the passing of the great race that had urged the state 
to destroy sickly infants and to get rid of inferior races. And so the Nazis defended their policies by pointing to this best-selling American book. After World War II, no one in America could publicly say they favored eugenics. And for half a century, his ideas lay dormant. Madison Grant died in 1937. He was a largely forgotten figure. Eugenics is making a comeback here at the beginning of the 21st century. We have the Human Genome Project. We can now see the actual genes that Madison Grant could only hypothesize. Some of the things that Madison Grant postulated, it turns out a number of our personality traits are inherited. What's interesting, the internet has allowed scattered groups of tiny individuals to share the passing of the great race with each other. Thanks to the World Wide Web, Madison Grant and eugenics are making a comeback.